Hello everyone and welcome to Epic Tavern. Now this is going to be a short little series where we check out this game currently in early access for I think £18.99 that is on Steam. You'll have to convert it into your local currency as necessary. Now this game is developed by Hyperkinetic Studios I think if I've gotten that right and it's effectively a kind of fantasy management RPG. It has something in common with a game I played recently called Questa in that you send out a party of heroes after recruiting them to go and do a certain quest. It, it hasn't quite got the, the super tongue-in-cheek feel that Quest had, but it does still have a... Well, you'll see when we start. As ever, it's a lot easier to show than it is to uh, describe. But we're going to start a brand new game, the Dapper Dragon. Uh, we're actually going to completely use that name again. We're going to destroy it first. There we are. There's only one save file at the moment. The others will be added over time. Right. And uh, you know what? The Dapper Dragon was a pretty... Uh Good, good tavern name, if I do say so myself. Uh, okay, create new profile. All right, now we're going to be treated to kind of a world-building-ish tutorial to start with, and then we'll move into the actual tavern management section. Uh, right, it's kind of more of an abstract management, though. Okay, long ago, the land of Bior was nearly annihilated by a horde of netherkin invading through the flaming gate. I like the word netherkin. Villages were trampled to dust and Bior burned. Not villagers, villages. Though they also were probably trampled. After a grueling war, the Netherkin were defeated and the Flaming Gate was sealed. For 1,400 years, the seal held. 1414. I'm going to assume that's after Nether. Huh? Our last toast to the Ravenger 4. Uh, okay. Blaze. You know I hate that name, Eric. You and Lycassia, I'm assuming it's a hard and then a softy, are the only Ravengers. It makes us sound like we're all... Hmm? I didn't pick it, Blaze. People just started calling us that. Hmm. Is that how you remember it? You spent the better part of a year trying to get that name to stick. Hmm. Bottoms up, kids. If Ignatius is to be believed, the Flaming Gate won't hold much longer. Of all your half-assed plans, this may be the worst. Hmm? You have a better idea? Can't say that I do, but that doesn't make yours any less awful. Hmm? Take Thorgrin and ready the horses. Lycassia and I will be out momentarily. Hmm? You have the letter? I, they haven't got any, but okay. Hmm? Right here. We're abandoning our child, Merrick. Hmm? We're doing what has to be done. Besides, we've survived worse than this. Uh, okay, not not really, but if you die first, I'll raise you as a banshee or something. Mm. Wow, what an offer. A banshee? At least make me a vampire. I would look amazing with the fangs. Mm. Deal. Are you ready, my dear? Mm. No, there, that's not apt to change. Let's go. Now, we'll actually be spending a lot of time in this tavern here as uh, the main part of the management section of the game. But uh, here's a quest, a one-way trip. Well, that's not foreboding. Flaming Gate, provisioning cost 360 gold out of our 1,200. That's fine. Difficulty is 65. We'll get 80 rep. None of this matters at all right now. But later on, it's going to matter for us. For the first time in 1,400 years, the Flaming Gate has been breached and a horde of Netherkin are pouring into the realm. Fight your way to the Nethercap Mountains and use the artifact provided by Ignatius Mordred to seal the gate before this world is lost. Very well. How foreboding. Okay, that is, I assume, one way trip over there. Can, can we zoom out? I'm fairly certain we're starting from all the way over here at the tavern but we have to set up our party and this is a uh, somewhat similar to uh quest there we've only got four people here so we're just gonna pop them all in there they're all level 10 so we've got a 39 percent chance of success on this really um i mean they're all combat fairly high combat skills so uh, i guess it's still fairly low but the party parameters we have got so so low um uh Social, there we go. Combat, survival, and mind. Down here, under construction. It's helpful to arrive at the destination in one piece, so uh, that would give us um, some 
other options at some point. Perhaps we could choose the safe route and a less safe route or something similar. Or maybe it'll just tell us about it a little bit more. Either way, there's going to be a lot of things that are currently under construction in this game. So be prepared for that. But let's go forth. There we go. Now, this is the part that really reminded me of Quest. Just the, the random chatterings along the way, occasionally interspersed by some sort of ordeal we must overcome. So, travel. With one final look back at their long-time haunt, the Ravenger 4 step out into the streets with screens of terror echo all around. We could fast forward, but oh, actually that's not even there yet, but uh, maybe one day we'll be able to. Lycasia scans the scene outside the tavern, where packs of netherkin, their skin the colour of ash, wreak havoc in the, all directions. We'll help who we can on the way, but reaching the gate is our priority, she says. So long as that's open, battles out here mean nothing. Mount up. We ride for the nether camps. I like the names of the places so far. Okay, a ragged group of stone, uh, stone moor clan orcs, several of their number laying dead around them, fight shoulder to shoulder, defending the entrance to a crossroads in from a pack of wolf-like netherkin. Blaze kicks her horse into a gallop and rushes to reinforce them. And now it's complete. We don't do much in the battle but say to roll, and then based on the setup of our party, we'll have a good chance of success or not. In this case, we rolled actually well with uh, Lycasia and Merrick. Thogrin and Blaze, not so well. But they, you know, Thogrin actually managed to uh, contribute quite a lot of effort despite rolling fairly low there. And effort is based on the stats that are important to the quest, though certain, um, I think, certain events will call upon very specific stats rather than the overall group's ability in something. Um, the Winds of Fate blew with the party, so it actually increased our 75 to 87. We didn't need it, but uh, we received 107 gold as a result. Blaze leans down from his saddle, uh, dissecting a two-headed wolf with her katana as she passed. Uh, reinvigorated by the new allies, the orcs rush forward, chopping down the rest of the beasts. Merrick reanimates their corpses with a wave of his hand and commands them to obey the orcs. Good doggies. Wow, that, that's actually pretty, pretty awesome. Turn the enemies against the enemy. I like it. So many innocent lives lost, Stalkin says, kneeling next to the broken corpse of a young child. Snap out of it, Blaze yells, smacking the dwarf on the back of the head. Get on your ho damn horse, now! That's a bit harsh. He is a cleric, after all. This kind of stuff matters to me. Roars of battle echo from ahead, and the heroes spot a dozen elite raven guards making a heroic defensive stand in an alley to buy time for a school's evacuation. Ah, of course there was going to be a school involved, that's what makes it heroic. Dead netherkin are piled waist high at the alley entrance, but they continue rushing forward relentlessly. Okay, well, let's see what they've got. Oh no, he failed! Um, the Winds of Fate blew against us and lowered our score even further, and Blaze is now likely wounded as a result. The heroes charge into the fray, but the Raven Guard are overrun shortly after the final civil civilian is evacuated. The courage of the Battle of Ravenfall will be immortalized by the bards for all time. Now, from what I can tell, every time y you fail or succeed, it doesn't often change the ultimate outcome, but will often change the way the outcome happened. Um, so in this case, for example, the Raven Guards are now dead. They may have survived had we succeeded, and the the names of the battles seem to change as well. It's actually really, really interesting. I, I'd love to know how much of this is procedural and how much of it is actually um, written up. Like, they, they wrote two outcomes out specifically, and, you know, the name of the battle was put in there. Okay, it's a bit of a long walk. No music, that's a bit of a pain. They just keep coming, Blaze says, hacking through a tentacled netherkin in an overrun village. Eyes on the gate, Medic commands. But yes, I, I think a little bit of background music on these long missions would actually be pretty cool. A trio of elven archers protecting a young girl yell out for help, cornered by a grotesquely muscled netherkin, standing nearly ten feet tall. Lieutenant Knight's Mane shakes his head and leads his crew of human guards towards the city proper. We have our own to protect. Oh, really? Really, Lieutenant? You bring dishonour. Dishonour upon your, your, your military company, my lord. Um, we had 72, but the Winds of Fate blew against us. Now, I don't know what 
encourages that, but as a result, we did fail in the end. Blaze gained lightly wounded again. As the heroes rush forward, the Netherkin grabs one archer and beats another to death with him. The heroes cut down the beast, and Merrick raises the Netherkin as a giant wraith to escort the remaining archer and child to safety. Wow, Merrick, you're doing a lot of work here. Yeah? You gotta save some of these powers for the for the boss fight, I'm fairly certain. Okay, with a wave of his hand as they ride through the carnage, Merrick animates a half dozen dead netherkin as zombies and commands them to attack their brethren. You need to teach me that trick one day, Blaze says. Yeah, I know, and the rest of us. That's rather awesome. Okay, now this is a mind challenge. Help us, a frail old man bellows out the window of the orphanage. He is immediately pounced by a netherkin and torn to pieces. As the heroes rush forward, Merrick barks. Get to the children. I'll conjure up some reinforcements. Okay, let's hope we succeed this one. No, we are doing so badly. And it blew with us this time as well, but it just wasn't enough to get, get up there. Lightly wounded is starting to pull down our performance. Merrick whips his hand at a pile of nearby corpses who rise obediently. The other heroes rush into the orphanage and find dozens of children already dead. They herd the few survivors into the cellar, and Merrick orders the undead soldiers to guard the door. It'll have to do, he says, rushing to his horse. I mean, we've, we've, got, we've got bigger fish to fry, I think. Though, uh, by the looks of that, um, maybe, maybe more kind of Lovecraftian fish. Screams echo from all around as the heroes ride through the carnage, aiding where they can. Gods protect us, Thogrim mutters. And what are we going to get next? There we are, another battle. The Royal Cavalry, with Bengar Skull Splitter at the helm, charge toward a nightmarish throng of Netherkin. Now, he yells as the cavalry breaks into two columns around the horde, hacking down creatures as they pass. The heroes rush to reinforce them. Yeah, it seems like they've got this one in hand. Oh, of course, now we, we win. Okay, well, it blew against us, but that didn't do too much. It reduced it to 78 from 90. We did really well, though uh, poor Blaze really is suffering down there. With a sweep of his axe, Bengar splits a leaping wolf-like netherkin in two, but is knocked off his horse by the impact. The heroes fight their way to his side and together decimate the group of otherworldly invaders. My thanks, heroes, Bengar says, grunting as he slings his wounded leg over his saddle and leads his troops away. We earned a little bit of gold from that. Nice. I'm not sure if the gold that we earn right now is going to make any difference because of reasons that you're about to find out. They're still pouring out of the tunnels, Blaze says, looking down at the entrance to the Nethercap cave system from a rocky overhang. But I know another way. Watch your step. It's a bit tricky. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. How tricky is tricky? Okay, this is a survival challenge. You can't be serious, Dogrin says, looking at the narrow ledge with an 80-foot drop to the rocks below. Blaze chuckles. Trust me. When have I ever steered you wrong? At, that was a rhetorical question, she says, raising a finger to ward off the dwarf's long string of examples. Okay, please. Oh, no! Oh, no. Okay, Blaze casually skips across the narrow ledge, followed by Merrick and, uh, like, uh, Lycassia. Or Lysakia? No, I think Lycansia sounds better. Thogrim gulps nervously and starts across. His protruding belly makes it impossible to stay flush against the wall, and he loses his balance. Only Lycansia's lightning reflex to save him before he topples into the ravine. <sighs> okay, well, uh, that was fortunate, I suppose. Oh, my lord. Outside the back entrance of the Nethercap cave system, Merrick addresses his companions. You've done enough by getting me here. If you want to leave now... I swear I will not hold it against you. Blaze chuckles. And let you get all the glory. Sorry, old man, we're in this together. Well done, Blaze. The Ravenger 4 stepped through the cave entrance and immediately spot its guardian, a nightmarish spider like Netherkin, scuttling toward them on eight human arms. The heroes ready their weapons and fan out around it. Success! Oh, fantastic. And it blew against us as well. Uh, that was actually pretty good, though eesh, that's not so great. Um, don't destroy the head! I want this one, Merrick says to Lycassia. She nods, takes a slow breath, and lets an arrow fly, killing the nightmarish creature instantly with a hit to the throat. With a wave of his hand, the necromancer reanimates the monstrosity and orders it to, orders it to guard the tunnel behind them. Marvellous. With a bone-chilling howl, a large pack of mutant wolves enters from a side tunnel. Oh, that, that bloody monstrosity was not worth anything. Um, and takes up the chase. A long, straight passageway opens into a large chamber ahead. The heroes make a run for it. Let's see what we get. A failure. Well, that's... Thogrin gained death. <laughs> well, that must be inconvenient, Thogrin. 
Oh, my lord. We wouldn't have won anyway, though. The heroes rush down the hall with the slavering pack of mutant wolves close behind. Lycassia leaps aside, suddenly yelling, Pit! But Thogrin reacts too late and topples into it, followed by a dozen of the beasts. Ah, that was unfortunate. A gargantuan two-headed netherkin stands guard at an arched doorway on the far side of the chamber. A bright, flickering blue light from beyond it illuminates the room. And us without a healer, medic sighs as they move to engage. Oh, that's referencing the fact that Tolkien wasn't there. Um, is that perhaps a um, scripted event? Or is it just a, in case Tolkien isn't there, there's a separate uh, thing there? Because that's pretty cool. Uh, we did quite well, and it actually blew with us as well. Merrick animates a few nearby netherkin that were killed by the brethren, and uses them to distract the giant while Lycassia lines up her shot. Turn him right, she says. No, he's right, and hold! Her arrow finds its mark, vanishing into the giant's ear hole. It drops dead. Marvellous. Last chance, Merrick says to his companions. I don't expect to come back from this. Play shakes her head. Too risky. Who's going to trigger that artifact if you suddenly drop dead of old age? The heroes embrace briefly, then step through the archway. Beyond the archway, the adventurers see an enormous gate rippling with nether energy. Before it stands the form of a young girl, bathed in crackling blue flames. Lycassia laces up the enruined boots they received from artifact collector Ignatius Mordred. I hope these things work, she says. Impressive. The young girl speaks directly into their minds while idly, idly playing with a ball of crackling blue energy. Join me and I'll let you live. Lycassia shakes her head and taps the heels of her boots together, emitting a low hum. Appreciate the invite, kid, but we had something else in mind. Okay. And success. Oh, thank goodness. And we wouldn't have succeeded if the winds of fate hadn't blown with us. How did Thogrin still take part in that? And Merrick actually did super bad as well. Thorgrin did better than you, Merrick, and he's dead, apparently. Though I'm seeing not so much death there. You think your puny weapons can harm Elysia, overlord of the nether? The child shrieks, like Cassia shrugs. Guess we'll never know, because that's not our plan. She stomps one of her boots of quaking to the ground, starting a massive earthquake that brings the mountain down on top of them. Well, I suppose that is one way to do it. There we go. And so the Ravenger 4 called the mountain down upon Alicia and her Netherkin horde, ending the battle of the mountain of Mountain Fall, and once again sealing the gate. Like Cassia and Merrick Ravenger, Thorgrin Bloodborne, and Blaze Evershadow, may the bards sing of their heroism unto eternity. I agree. Okay, so uh, we've got uh, the epic moment, uh, yeah, I guess that was probably the most epic moment in that whole thing. But everyone is dead, so I guess they don't need any uh, any part of the coin. I guess the tavern can just take all 970 coin. I think that's completely fair. I mean, they're not going to do anything with it, and we got no loot there. We got Quest Rewards of 80. Yeah, I think that that's good. That's good. We'll have a nice little uh, starting capital, maybe. I don't know. Okay, all right then. 14.24. A.M. Uh, I believe that makes it ten years later. A new tavern opens its doors today. This is the story of the Dapper Dragon. What a fantastic name that is for an inn. If I ever ever make enough YouTube money to open an inn, that is going to be the name of it. It's going to be a quintal inn, just off off some sort of hidden trail. The path to it will be obscured by by shrubberies and and dry stone walls, and and there'll be a little smith a smithy out back. There'll be an open fire in the tavern, but there'll be a smithy there as well. Just a you know, that, that kind of unmistakable smell of blacksmithing just permeates that, oh, it's going to be grand. And I won't use electric light, and of course I won't. There'll, there'll, be, there'll be candles everywhere. There'll be insurance probably going to be through the roof. The fire hazard will not make my insurance easy. Oh, my lord. But welcome to Epic Tavern. Expand and improve the rundown tavern your parents left you. Protect the realms of Bior by cultivating great heroes. Oh, we're back down to level one. Scallywags, we were level three before. Okay, uh, level one, gained two roster slots. Income has increased to 40 gold. So we'll make 40 gold no matter what every day. That is generally not going to be enough to do anything that we want to do. Can I move it around? No, I can't apparently. Okay, so new patron. Hello, you. Click here to spend two action points to find out about this mysterious quest. We've got uh, 50 action points before last call. Good coin is being offered, if you're interested. Uh, tell me more, Cranston. 
Okay, chapter one, Stomp, level one. The tavern has an unfinished basement, which could be converted into a wine cellar. It would require the extermination of the ill-tempered rats that currently have the run of the place, but surely there's an adventurer or two who would be up to the task. Uh, okay, well, I can choose one of two ways to do this. I'll get 25 reputation no matter what. This way, trying to kill the rats one by one will take forever. Poisoning the unwelcome guests is the way to go. But if we go with Stomp, might as well get in a bit of target practice before heading out on any more dangerous quests. Kill the rats the old-fashioned way with an excessive display of violence. We'll also get XP and gold. So, yeah, we'll do this one. There we are. Okay, well, that's our quest now. But before we can actually go out there and do anything, uh, anything else you want? Can I? Can I? No, no, there's nothing else for you to do. And uh, Normally, it would allow me... Oh, it's the tutorial. Okay. So, new patron over here, then. Uh, we have to welcome them to the Dapper Dragon. Well met. Welcome to the Dapper Dragon. Just got to sharpen my knife. We can hire him for two AP. Like, everything we do, including serving people listening to this stories, costs action points. So, you can only do a certain amount of things in your tavern every day before you have to um, resolve any quests you've gone on and then start the next day. But we've already got five friendship, which is all we needed with you to hire you. So there we are, a Grunson Wolf Spawn, level one barbarian. Death comes for us all, maybe today, um, I suppose, yeah. Uh, can I do my own thing now or can I? No, I've still got to follow the tutorial, okay. So my self-esteem has been terrible lately. I hear drinking helps, um, sure, welcome to the Dapper Dragon. Uh, well met, met, I am Murgle, Fire Mage for Hire. Now, from what I've seen so far, I'm not sure if some of the characters are just simply have got, like, um, stories written up. As you can see over here, personal stories, and the more they get to know us, the more they'll be willing to share their stories with us. But I've got a feeling that some may be procedurally generated. I'm not sure if any of them are specifically um, set up in, in a very specific way um, and actually have a story quest line and things like that but it does seem that there's uh, quite a lot of room for that in the future but we're gonna hire you there you go Mirgle Fling Tongue that's a good name for a fire mage success you've got your first quest and a full roster so click here oh, do I have to waste the whole day uh, it looks like I have to oh well we'll be able to do our own thing tomorrow right well we've only got two people so that's really all we're bringing along uh, if you need someone incinerated, that's kind of my speciality. Well done. Now, you're actually better at mind. In fact, you're both better at mind by the looks of it. Yeah, and your secondary stat is survival. Nice. However, Grunson actually has skills. Now, this is something that I really like about this game. They have very diverse skills. Like, this isn't even all of the skills, from what I understand. The... Like, for example, some will have survival and they'll have tracking in there. Um, some might have different weapons and, and that sort of thing. From what I understand, like, you've got all customs. Not every character will have that. It's really, really cool because you actually get a group of people with different traits, different skills, and you do have to manage them. It's not just, you know, um, skin deep management. There is a, a genuine level of picking the right person for the right job. But because you've got melee weapons, you also contribute to uh, the the group skill. The party's total skill group bonus and the party's total power in this skill class. So that's actually pretty cool, I must say. Um, these are specific things that we want for this particular fight. So let's go ahead. We've, we've done all we need to do. Um, go forth. There we are. So we're going to clear out some rats from the cellar. Kind of exciting to engage in something so stereotypical, <laughs> Grunson says, rubbing his hands together. Aye, I'm sure it is. An angry, chittering, greasy intruders as the a pack of rat rushes forward to attack. Please don't fail this. I'm going to be very disappointed. You actually, you would have failed, I think. No, no, you rolled a level 0.75. Never mind, you, you, even with the poor performance, you would have actually succeeded but that did help us a little bit more our heroes are able to defeat the small pack of rodents in battle which is literally the least that could possibly be expected i know yeah we got 35 gold from that though two merchants argue in a public market brave heroes the older merchant calls will you play arbiter and decide our feud miracle continues towards the dapper dragon without breaking stride unless you're a mug of ale i got nothing to say to you. i like miracle there we go. The most epic moment was us killing rats. And that, that's actually quite quite sad. Now, one thing I've noticed is if you don't touch this, it's as if it's giving everyone 
like 110, 109, 100, that's not what it is. If you adjust any of this in any way, it, it changes that. And I actually think that that makes sense. Um, you've got very little money. And I think once you get enough money, you upgrade. So I actually want to give you the lion's share. You did most of the work. I'll take 20%. You take 80. There you go. You'll each get 87. There we are. You are massively in debt. Man, you, you were completely broke. How are you going to pay for the drink that you were buying? Assumedly. I assume you were buying drink. Okay, so this is the tavern uh, summary. I'm tripping over my words. Do apologize. Let me have a sip of tea to regain my composure. Mm. Red bush. So good. Okay, so this is the tavern summary. And every day you come in here and you see your, your income, your outgoing, so on and so forth. How our reputation changed. We need to get to level 80 to upgrade our tavern itself to level 2. And that will allow us to get more heroes. We made 40 um, coins simply from... Um, our daily um, earnings based on our tavern le um, level. No rival taverns yet. A lot of things are under construction. Rooms booked, memory shared, friendships gained, reputation gained. It looks like there's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening in this. And I'm really looking forward to it. Because as I've said, it's actually quite an engaging management sim. Just with what it has right now. With with all of this extra stuff coming in. Yeah, I think it's actually going to be pretty cool. Um, right, so in terms of the expenses... We didn't have to resupply goods. We didn't have to construct any upgrades. We did have to pay repairs and maintenance of 40 gold. And we had to get some provisions for the rat killing quest. But we got 150 gold. And the share of the quest loot, which was 44 gold. Like, we get the quest reward no matter what. But any additional loot is divvied up, I think. Not entirely sure about that. Uh, basic income, 40. Additional food sold. Now, we didn't strictly sell any food, but I guess the tavern does its own thing here and there. So, yeah, we made 45 gold in total. Not too terribly bad. Okay, now we are in full control, and this is good times for us. Um, okay, well... We've got a quest over here with a new patron. We'll have to spend a little bit of AP to learn about this, I think. Okay, come back with my wine. The house wine is running a bit low. Feldspar Square has an infamous and remarkably cheap wine shop, probably because no one can ever find it. The shop springs up out of nowhere every day and never in the same spot. Luckily, a patron thinks he knows where it will be today. We will get 100 gold, 100 EXP, 25 rep, and an oversized gavel. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, just a quick note here. I have been mentioning that um, there is a procedural element to the quest. Now, I have played through at least the tutorial once. And in that tutorial, I encountered different quests, different events along the route. Up until the end, where I'm fairly certain those were scripted. Now, interestingly, one of the quests I failed. And as a result of my failure, uh, like uh, a vineyard, their crops got blighted by the nether. As a result of that, there was a a item here that I could buy called nether wine, made from that vineyard. I am really interested to know if that is still something that we can buy. It's not. So that whole thing was only available. We could buy nether, nether wine because the grapes that grew from that vineyard were, were corrupted. And it was actually a really, really um, valuable thing because it was so expensive. And when people bought it, I made a lot of money. Um, but because we didn't have that quest and because I didn't fail the quest, that doesn't exist. That's brilliant. It, it, it points to me that there's going to be a lot of replayability in this game. And that is always a really, really big thing with these kinds of things. But okay, uh, anything else? Uh, I can welcome you. Not the classiest genre I've ever visited, but you can't beat the prices. Well, yeah, that's good, I suppose. Uh, so, now I know a little bit about you. At 10 um, friendship, I'd be able to hire you. You are Yajnar's Stab Fist. A level 2 weapon master. Ooh. So, you've got pretty high combat there. Hands and maces. Nice. You've got not very much personal story to have. Um, combat expertise as well. You've actually got quite a lot of combat skills. Uh, reflex, finesse, endurance. Okay, not not much of anything else though. Traits, you're slovenly and honourable. Okay, well, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, anything else? You'd like to buy some house wine? I've got 30 in stock. Sure, I'll uh, serve that to you for 2 AP and a bit of money. It is amazing. I don't know why I never tried this. Uh, fair enough. It doesn't look like you've got anything else. There. I can offer meals and drinks, but I am buying them at that point. And as a result, 
their friendship will go up and my like tavern level will get a little bit of an increase but i'm losing the money on that thing so i'll have to restock at some point but we got a new patron over here uh when or when the stonefall uh stoneforge okay do you think i should start working out uh if you feel like it uh, Gwenowin, at your service. Marvellous. You've got some, uh, oh, you're a mage. Got Geomancy, Cone of Cold, Wall of Wind, and Earth Shield. You've got some uh, knowledge of melee weapons, though. Good set of mind, though it's not a very high level. We can actually level them up when they level, by the way. That's not random. We get a certain amount of points and we can spend them on things. Um, I don't think we level up these guys. I think leveling is tied to how much money you have, so they have to be a hero to be earning that. Uh, survival, Earth Divination, Sanctuary, Mage Table, Spirit Navigator, wow. Uh, anything else? You want some house wine as well? Very well, I will serve you too. Getting a little bit of a reputation. Very, very nice. Okay, hello you. This place could use a goblin tossing pit. Uh, okay, Rogbutt, I'll take your word for it and I'll put it on the list of things to do possibly never. Uh, okay, is there some sort of first time a discount no all righty <laughs> i could now hire you but my tavern isn't high enough level to be able to take anyone else on but you've got some wonderful combat skills you're more of a, a ranged combat person you've also got a pretty uh, keen mind actually as well avoid detection perception very nice maybe later anything else no let's try working together eh? uh, maybe later uh we'll leave that for now uh do you do you want that? Uh, yeah, you do. Actually, you want some house wine. There we go. There we are. A little bit of uh, happiness there. And who be you, new patron? I apologize in advance for the amount of drunk I'm about to get. No, that's fine. This is a tavern. That's where you're going to come to get drunk. New tavern. How exciting. I'm a paladin. And my name is Catrice. Uh, very well met, Catrice. Uh, can I get a bowl of porridge, please? Sure you can. Uh, anything else you want? No. Doesn't seem it. Like, we'll get a little list over here. Um, to let us know what, what we need to deal with. Hello, Cranston. I dropped my coin pouch around here. Nobody move! Uh, hmm, is that a way for you to not pay for your drinks? Well, Matt, I'm Cranston. Night Stalker for hire. Uh, all right. That's, wow, your mind is super high. Avoid detection is really, really high for you. Social is actually pretty high, too. Uh, combat? Yeah, you're actually a fairly good uh, character. Uh, you want some soda water? Very well. There you go. Mm, this works. Thanks. And we have got you. Do you think I should start working out again? Only if you feel like it. Uh, right, combat. Eh, not so. Oh, combat healing. That's actually pretty cool. Wonder how that would affect people. Like, if people would cast healing, if that would be something like an event that would start popping up if someone was hurt. Pleased to meet you. I'm Marionia. Uh, Marionia, I guess. The next great priest of Bio. Just you wait. Marvelous. Would you like some mead? There you go. It is amazing. I don't know why I never... But really, you never tried me before? That's actually quite tragic. But there we go. We've got uh, all of the various friendship levels. Now, I've got 24 AP. Now, I can do various things. I can have a look at the tavern ceremony if I want. I'm re at really actually quite close to level 2. Really close to level 2. We've got all of these rooms. They're currently vacant. Uh, upgrade lodging. I can't do that right now. Um, show your room descriptions coming soon. There'll be a couple of things that are coming soon. Upgrade menu coming soon as well. Uh, are we low on anything? No, we're fine there. What about food? No, we're really fine there. Chicken wings? We've got 60 orders of chicken wings. My lord, that's quite a lot. Uh, okay, well, let's go back and actually start chatting with people. Uh, okay, you are eh, not, not someone I really want to hide right now. Cranston, though. Yes, Cranston Grimm. Let's offer you a drink, Cranston. Now, I see that Cranston doesn't like soda water, which is interesting because in the first game, there was someone named Cranston, and that was the first person who gave us a quest. So I imagine this is someone who just shows up um, as part of the tutorial because both of the current heroes I've got were the same ones in the tutorial. But these are all different. Cranston loved soda water initially. I don't know what you feel about me, but since I know you like house wine, sure, I'll give you a house wine. Uh, diluted with the finest of Valgrade spring water. Really? <laughs> really? Okay, I'll uh, give this to you. It, we won't make money from it, but I'll get a little bit of a reputation boost and we'll get you a little bit of happiness there. 29% um, on the porridge. Sure, let's get that for you. There we go. I want to get you up to the point where we can hire you, and for that I need to get this up to 80 first. So I'm going to get you shozzled. And let's try the meat. We, we don't know how much you'll like it, but let's go for it. 
Bottoms up, there we go. And another meal. Since I've got so many chicken wings, you can have one of those. There we are. Getting food at a bar is always a little sketchy, but let's give this a shot. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe, no, maybe not so great with him. Listen for one AP. Sometimes life gets a bit predictable and dull. That's where I come in. Uh, okay. Oh, I can't hire you. You're just a story character. That's interesting. Okay, you've got a lot of story. Wow. Okay. Fair enough, then. Goodbye. Um, who might we be able to hire? We've got a shaman, a night stalker, a priest, paladin. Um, do you kind of like the idea of a weapons master? Let's go and have a look at you. I might have enough to, to get you. I don't know. Uh, let's give you the house wine. It's got an affinity of 20%. I have no idea. I think that might just mean that people like it more. Certain people like these things more. Uh, let's grab you a meal. Let's go for porridge. Since you seem to enjoy that. And we should. Let's go for some. We haven't tried soda water. Raise your mugs for those we lost along the way. Huzzah! Okay. Level 2. We've increased our income and also gained a roster slot, which is amazing. Ooh, someone wants a bed. Sure. Uh, offer a room for 8 gold. There you go. You can go and have that one. Now, how close are you? Let's get you a little bit of something else. Let's get you some chicken wings. Go ahead. There we are. That smells delish. Dinner is served and I can hire you. Yes, please. Come and join us. Level 2 Weapon Master at our service. All right, so with that, we've got a little bit more AP, but nothing I really want to do with it right now. Doesn't look like there's... Oh, actually, do you want to drink? Um, I don't know. It doesn't look like... Uh, maybe you do, or maybe that's just showing me that you are proper drunk. Very well. Um, now, we're not going to spend any more money if we don't need to. There's no other new patrons here for us to uh, hang out with, so we're going to go to the map. And that's how you end... Every day, as far as I'm aware. You might be able to skip doing the quest if you really wanted to. But I don't think we need to. Let's get everyone joined up here. We need perception and tracking for this party. Uh, that's not great. You've at least got some mind. And you've got perception as well. So uh, it's 20 versus 10. We still only got a 45% chance of completing it. And you're going to be rubbish in the boss fight. Because the boss fight is pretty much going to be this um, type of uh, battle. From what I understand. You think we'll see a devil? Yajnar says as they exit the tavern. Grunts and shrugs. Who knows? My first time out. I need to walk straight into an undying. Very well. I wonder if all the conversation is uh, procedural. I imagine it probably is. As the night creeps in, grunts and senses it will be much colder than I anticipated. Okay, let's hope we succeed. There we go. Um, that is actually quite close. We would have only just succeeded without the wind anyway. Grunson collects firewood and sets up camp for the night. Dinner is enjoyed without incident. Marvelous. We made a little bit of extra cash. Okay. We haven't got to go too far. We've just got to go to Art Town down here. Murgle and Grunson link arms and skip down the path, whistling cheery tunes. Uh, okay, I guess you, you're getting on well. Well done. The party stops in Milston, uh, Milston to pull out Grunston's map. The patron marked a few potential locations where Feldspar Square may be setting up shop today. This will take advantage of my clever exploration skills, says Grunson. Uh, okay. You did win as well. Well done. Actually, you would have done quite well regardless, because even with the fate, winds of fate blown against us, we did all right. But you weren't paying attention. You literally could not contribute to this. That is interesting. That is very interesting. Grunson points to the mark near Gorn Fletch Lever's butcher shop. Sure enough, Feldspar Square has magically appeared at the end of the street. They head in and pick up the wine shipment. Marvellous. I approve. I approve hugely. Okay, let's get back to the tavern then. The party finds an isolated alchemist hut, though she is reluctant to share any recipes. Oh, we don't have any social in this group, I don't think. Yeah, she says the hero's packing. That is a shame. That might have been actually quite cool. But we still made 17 gold, I guess. Oh, well. Uh, all right. Just as the dapper dragon comes into view, the clouds open up in a full downpour. The heroes sprint the final few blocks home. Phew, we timed that one just right, Yajna says. <laughs> I always find it funny that there's kind of weird, uh, like, markup language there. Okay, well, we got a hundred loot, a hundred from Christ Rewards, a hundred EXP, 25 rep, an oversized gavel, and a bunch of GP as well. Marvellous. Again, 
I'm gonna give the lion's share to my my people instead. There we go. You, you can, wow, you're actually you've got a lot of money, but then again, you are level two, so that makes sense. But there we go. Go ahead. Um, actually, you don't need it as much, so let me uh, drop your share a little bit. I know you, because again, you didn't even help. You didn't even help. Can I? I wish I could. Can I set this? Ah, oh, that's that's gonna annoy me so much. But there we go. You didn't even help in the boss battle. You don't get full full payment. No, 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 no. You ought to work for your money in this tavern. Okay, so yesterday we made 138 gold. That was actually pretty good. Expense is um, fairly normal. Um, let's see, provincial for the new quest, 30 gold. Yeah, it, it seems reasonable. Okay, not bad at all, I must say. And we've got people who want food. Marvelous stale bread for you. Only three gold. Oh, that's a bit of an annoyance. Wow, this stuff blows me away. I'll have to order this all. No, oh, please don't. Order something more expensive. Um, uh, got you some stale bread again. Uh, thank you so much. I feel so lucky to have. Oh, uh, really? Now you make him feel bad. Okay, Rogbert, let's get you some drink. Can I trouble you for a glass of house wine, please? Wow, that's uh, uh, an interesting way to speak. Honestly, I wasn't expecting you to be so eloquent. But here you go. I guess that that's a lesson. Don't judge a book by its cover. Um, just because someone's got a name that has but at the end doesn't mean they can't they can't uh, speak eloquently. Damn it. Ah, my lord. Uh, right. Nurgle, have you got a quest for me? The blacksmith's husband, let me know about this. Tell me more. Across the street. Provisioning cost 30 gold. A food vendor across the street scared a rat into his cooking fire and roasted the poor thing alive. Perhaps out of insanity or desperation, he gave it a nibble. Turns out rat doesn't taste half bad. Flyers circulate claiming, bring your own rat. Get the first grilled free. Ah, uh, joy. Okay. Bure. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, anything else you need? Oh, I was thinking about the other day. Okay. After killing those rats, I feel ready to take on the world, or at least incrementally larger groups of rats. <laughs> well played. Um, now we can either have a quick chat, or we can reminisce over drinks. I'm gonna spend five AP. Sure, you're one of my heroes. You deserve it. Memories, am I right? Yeah, you are. Oh, that actually completed your story as well, so I can speak to you again. Despite what that nosy do-gooder Catris would have you believe, I'm perfectly respectable by maid standards. Uh... Okay, Catris hadn't actually said anything, I don't think, but all right. Hey, Ashnaz, what's up? The memories we have working together are crazy. Okay. You think the teleporting wine merchant was weird? I used to hang out at a bar built on the back of a giant turtle. That actually does sound pretty pretty awesome, honestly. So sure, we'll reminisce over drinks as well. Uh, anything else? Uh, ooh, you want some bread? Sure. Uh, there you go. Handsome style bread. Mm, this works. Thanks. I really wish you guys would order something better, though. To be honest with you, we've got new patrons though. Let's have a look at you. Don't you ever take a break? No. No, actually, I don't. Uh, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My friends call me Ugna. Ugat, rather. Okay, anything else? You'd like a, a glass of wine? Sure. Uh, unfortunately, can't hire you. Might if I could, though. Uh, Tavern Keep! Yes, yes, yes. I hear your chef is to die for. I'm a Dugrim, and I'd love to check out your menu. Very well. What would you like? Working with you has been interesting. I, we haven't worked together, though. I know a guy who used to say, you never forget your kills. I can tell you that is the voice of inexperience. <laughs> wow. You only get a quick chat because you're not one of my heroes yet. Um, anything else? You want to stay? Will you please all stop ordering stale bread? I've got money to make here. This town doesn't run itself. It actually does actually make a lot of money by itself. But shh. Right. Offer room for eight gold. Very well. Uh, no, thank you. I have to decline. <gasps> really? You declined? Oh, man. That sucks. A fortune teller once told me that the Dapper Dragon will be my undoing. What did you say? That, uh, this is the Dapperest Dragon. Yeah, totally different. Bomb, uh, bomb throm at your service. I'm always willing to check out a new tavern. It looks nice. Uh, could I trouble you for a cup of soda water, please? Uh, very well. Very well, there you go. Your soda water. How about you? I apologize in advance for the amount of drunk I'm about to get. Well, you know, at least you order something better than soda water. And if you do order something, we'd go for the chicken wings, if I might suggest them. The wilderness is calling to me! Uh, maybe later. Anything else other than that? No. Okay. Uh, apparently you do want to drink, though. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Mead. There you go. I like it. 
I'll have to have a little more to see what I really think, though. I approve of this person. Approve. Uh, can I go and... Can I upgrade the rooms? Can I... I want to upgrade lodgings. No. I, I want to... Please allow... Upgrade. Uh, that might be a coming soon thing, too. Uh, that's a bit of a shame. I'll be staying in town tonight. Do you have a room for me? Uh, I do. You can have this... When, um, what? 909? I don't think so. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about something. Uh, okay. Go ahead, I guess. Before you get any ideas, all hits have to go through the guild. We can't have people running around committing murder or willing it. I, I agree with that, actually. Now, uh, we have reached the end of the day. We've spent all of our AP, so it's time for us to go to the map and see on our quest, I think. Uh, okay, that's uh, no social way. This is gonna be rough. It's gonna be super rough. You can't do anything. Well, you'll be there to help me out with a couple of things. We've got four party power against ten for the quest. This is we've got a one percent chance of success. Oh, this is gonna be rough. Wait, 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 wait again. We have got an oversized guy. Oh my lord, it's got social too. Well. You kind of need it. I'll be honest. You've got a mall which is giving you some good stuff, but I'd like you to have the gavel, honestly. So, yeah, because you've already got combat anyway. What about my other people? So that's done. What are you wielding? You've got nothing wielded. Uh, done. Nor of you, actually. So you can have the mall. There you go. Hammers and maces plus one. There we are. That should be a little bit better. There we go. Right back to the, the, the map. Uh, no, the map. There we go. Right, everyone is assigned. Good. Now everyone can at least help out a little bit, and our chance of success has gone up to eight. Ah, okay, let's get out there then. The heroes pause to watch a storytelling juggler reenact a battle between a weapon master and a scoffin. What on earth is a scoffin? If I was the kind of person who tipped street performance, I would totally do it now. Yashna says, super awkward way. Wow, Yashna, that's, that's heartless, man. Heartless. And this tea is awesome. The deteriorating remains of a giant statue looms in the distance, well off the party's path. An introspective Yajnas wonders to himself if anyone will remember him when he is gone. Uh, well, maybe you should start tipping people and they will remember you. Or maybe write even great sagas about you and, and do street performances. A group of bandits, wow, well, this is the, the epic tale of Yajnas, really. A group of bandits jumps out from the woods, knives and swords drawn. Yajnas give the bandits a tongue lashing and a lecture on why they deserve a better life than stealing from others. The speech ends with, be proud of what you bring into this world. The bandits leave, newly determined to do good. Well done, Yajnas. Ah, <laughs> oh, that gavel, that gavel has amazing effects, apparently. Okay, the line of hungry folks stretches nearly two blocks. We had no other events, that's, that's rubbish. A frazzled chef is roasting rodents at a breakneck pace to try and keep up. A makeshift sign in front of his cart reads, Quan Dooley, modern taste expert. Please, wins of fate. No! We got no gold. Grunton accidentally steps on the toes of a short-tempered orc barbarian named Grisilla Marosucker and is knocked to the ground in return. Sub-adventurous, he says. Maybe I'll stop by your tavern sometime and show you how it's done. Uh, all right, Grisilla Marosucker. Awesome name, though. I've got to be honest for Barbarian. I, I must be honest. That is actually a quite intimidating Barbarian name. Oh, over here. I think I saw someone, something in the grass, Grunson says. Uh, okay. Oh, that could have been succeeded at something. It's a medallion. Grunson picks it up and immediately feels blessed. 35 gold. Well, at least this wasn't a complete waste. The road-weary adventurers round a corner and see the dapper dragon up ahead. Thank the gods, Mughal says. Be warned, anyone who gets between me and my bed is apt to get hurt. Death by snow snow? Failure. Turns out the process of making barbecue rat is as simple as it sounds. Well, he there, the heroes clash with a barbarian by the name of Grisilla Marosucker, who promised, threatened, to stop by the tavern sometime and show them what a real adventure looks like. I, I mean, I mean, we got XP and some loot, I, I guess, but you guys suck, so no loot for you. I will take most of the loot. Um, actually, you with the scallywag who ruined it all, no loot for you at all. Bad, naughty. And Yajnaz, you did like, oh, well, actually, ah, oh, damn it. You did actually find the medallion. 
Uh, all right. Since you're the only one who actually made money, even though you also lost, uh, I'll leave it there. I I think that's that's honestly very very kind of us. Grunson actually feels blessed. You are legitimately blessed. Apparently, that's rather awesome. Okay, and we're back to the Dapper Dragon. Uh, we're currently whispered off. We're only level two. Uh, we've got 164 reputation, and yesterday we made 134 gold. Not terrible, I suppose. Returning parties one, returning adventurers three, successful quests zero, failed quest one. Yeah, Grunson. But uh, that's where we're going to be ending this episode. I do hope you've all enjoyed and are looking forward to the next. We'll probably play a couple of episodes of this and just check out what the game is like before we wait for it to add a bit more of the content. But do let me know what you think of the game so far down in the comments. And uh, if there's enough interest, then perhaps we'll see this here for a little bit longer than just a few episodes. Who knows? But that's it from me. So until next time, and as always, do take care of yourselves.